A warm greeting. Today is Saturday, March 15, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. Over the past weekend, I recorded a video discussing ENSO conditions and how La Nina has been dissipating in the equatorial Pacific. Specifically, we talked about the warming that has occurred in sea surface temperatures in the Nino 3.4 region. Additionally, we discussed the possibility that the La Nina phenomenon could dissipate in the coming months. Even so, for the upcoming hurricane season, models continue to project that we will have neutral ENSO conditions or that La Nina could even return. As we mentioned in that video, neutral ENSO conditions or the presence of La Nina typically favor more cyclonic activity in the Atlantic, as they reduce wind shear across the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, and the main cyclogenesis region. In fact, this week, NOAA updated its ENSO forecast, showing that for the peak of the season, August, September, and October, there is only a 13% probability of El Nino conditions, which means there is an 87% probability of either neutral conditions or La Nina. The presence of La Nina or neutral conditions in the Pacific does not guarantee an active hurricane season, as other factors can influence how active the season may be. One of the most important factors is how sea surface temperatures will behave across the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. As I promised last week in today's video, we will review some of the seasonal model projections, which generally suggest that the 2025 hurricane season should be near normal. Let's begin by looking at the projections from North American models. Here, we can see the projected sea surface temperature anomalies for August, September, and October. Notice that in the equatorial Pacific, we see blue colors associated with below normal temperatures, suggesting that these models indicate the potential return of La Nina. Additionally, notice that they also project the possible development of the Atlantic La Nina. Some studies have found that when waters cool in the Gulf of Guinea, this tends to reduce cyclonic activity originating from Cape Verde. So, while on one hand, projections indicate that La Nina could return and reduce wind shear in the Atlantic, on the other hand, the Atlantic La Nina could result in decreased cyclonic activity, at least between the Caribbean and Africa. At the very least, this would be good news. If we take a closer look at the North Atlantic Basin, notice the yellow-colored areas, which indicate regions where sea surface temperatures are expected to be above normal. Unlike last year, these anomalies appear to be concentrated in the subtropical region rather than in the main cyclogenesis region. This could lead to unfavorable conditions for an active season, as it may create significant atmospheric stability in the tropical Atlantic, making it more difficult for tropical cyclones to develop. This is precisely what the ensemble of North American models is showing, a band of low precipitation represented in yellow across the southern tropical Atlantic. In green, we see above normal precipitation anomalies, which suggests that storm tracks may have a more northwesterly component, potentially reducing the risk for the Caribbean. Now, let's take a look at the CANSIPS model projection. For the peak of the season, it suggests that we may have neutral ENSO conditions and a Gulf of Guinea with below normal temperatures. Zooming in on the North Atlantic, and similar to the American model ensemble, we see that sea surface temperatures are expected to be warmer than usual, particularly in the subtropical North Atlantic. Meanwhile, the main cyclogenesis region, although showing slightly above normal sea surface temperatures, may experience conditions that are not very favorable for the formation and development of tropical systems. Like the previous model, this one suggests that atmospheric stability may hinder tropical waves from developing rapidly. However, the CAN-SIPS model does project significant precipitation during the peak months of the season. This serves as a reminder that, regardless of whether a hurricane season is active or inactive, it is always important to be prepared. Additionally, I want to highlight that for Mexico and Central America in particular, the CAN-SIPS model projects significant rainfall during September. We also have the projection from the CFS model. During the peak of the season, it indicates either neutral conditions or a weak El Nino developing in the Pacific, along with the possible presence of the Atlantic La Nina in the Gulf of Guinea. These two factors could result in unfavorable conditions for cyclogenesis in the main development region. If we zoom in on the North Atlantic, we see a pattern where sea surface temperature anomalies are expected to be warmer in the subtropical Atlantic, which could result in a fairly stable atmosphere across the main cyclogenesis region, as well as between the Caribbean and Africa. This is why the model also projects a region of the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean Sea with below normal precipitation, represented in yellow for August, September, and October. Meanwhile, it shows above normal precipitation anomalies just northeast of the Caribbean, suggesting storm tracks with a more northwesterly component. But remember, this does not mean that no cyclones are expected to develop that could threaten the Caribbean, Central America, Mexico, or the United States. It simply means that projections suggest that, unlike last year, 
storm tracks may be slightly farther north. Finally, I wanted to show you the projections from the European model regarding cyclonic activity in both the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic. This model run extends at least through August and September, indicating that cyclone activity in the Atlantic is expected to be near normal, as well as in the Eastern Pacific. We see the same trend in the hurricane formation projections, where the model suggests slightly below average activity in the Atlantic, forecasting five hurricanes instead of the usual six by September. Meanwhile, activity in the Eastern Pacific is expected to be near normal. Lastly, looking at the accumulated cyclone energy, ACE, projections, they generally support a near normal hurricane season for both the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic. As we can see, although conditions may change in the coming months, there is a strong consensus that overall, atmospheric and oceanographic conditions will likely favor a near normal hurricane season in both the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific. Of course, this will depend on what happens with ENSO, La Nina, and El Nino as well as how sea surface temperature anomalies evolve in the North Atlantic. Well, that's all for this video. Before I go, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be alerted whenever I upload new videos. With that, I'll sign off. See you in the next video. Take care.